If you're like me, you remember hitting up Blockbuster in the mid-90s and coming across the double VHS copy of Stephen King's The Stand, a six-hour epic I ironically watched sitting down. So when I heard CBS All Access, or should I say No Access if you were trying to watch the Super Bowl, was making a completely new, huge budget, full series adaptation, I was like, It's a bomb! Oops, sorry, wrong clip. In this video, I thought it would be fun to look at some of the biggest differences between the 1994 version and CBS's 2021. So put on your hazmat suits and make sure to like and subscribe because here we go. Before we begin, just a few words of note, this video won't be delving into the over 1,000 page long book, partly because I can't read. And I'll be going pretty fast because there's a lot to get to and even then I've left out some of the differences just for time. But if you think I've left something major out, let me know in the comments. I'll also be referring referring to the 2020-2021 version as CBS and the 1994 version as the miniseries. So other than the CBS adaptation being shot almost 26 years after the miniseries, CBS has nine hour long episodes and the miniseries four hour and a half long ones, leaving the CBS version with three extra hours to tell the story. And even the way it's told is different. I actually preferred the miniseries which told everything chronologically, starting with June 17th, the day the plague is unleashed on Earth, and ending on November 15th. The CBS version is all over the place, including multiple flashbacks and time jumps, making it difficult for those who aren't familiar with the story to piece together what really happened. This version takes place mainly in the fall and winter, as opposed to summer and fall, but that's probably due in part to the shooting schedule. Unlike the CBS version, the miniseries was written by Stephen King himself. He even has a brief cameo playing a character by the name of Teddy Wyzek, a character who in the CBS version is brutally shot to death. And bonus points for those of you who caught Steve even in the background of this poster in episode four. So the story really starts when a virus known as Captain Trips escapes from a US military base. In both cases, a guard decides to escape, inadvertently spreading it into the world. You also notice the effects of the virus in this CBS version are really amped up, showing huge bloated necks. Well, the miniseries, they just kinda pumped some makeup and had people act dead. In Ogunquit, Maine, we get our first look at one of the most important characters in the story, Harold Lauder. And damn, they did this boy dirty in the miniseries series. Look at those pimples. In the CBS version, they really set him up as being a pervert and messed up from the get-go, which is why I prefer the miniseries. Here he's set up as the love-struck friend zone loser you kind of feel sympathy for. It's only until later that he goes full evil. To show how different these two versions are, one need only look at the screen time given to this character in the first episode. The first episode of the CBS version basically is dominated by this character and his backstory, while in the miniseries he's only given one scene in the entire hour and a half long episode. Nick Andros, played by hunky dreamboat Rob Lowe, is given a Latino makeover in CBS and a more fleshed out backstory where we see his eye gets gouged out in a bar fight. Rob gets to keep his eye in the miniseries version probably because he's so handsome. In the miniseries he only communicates via notepad, but the CBS version Franny knows sign language and acts as his interpreter. Ed Harris also has a brief cameo playing General Starkey, the man responsible for trying to cover up the virus. In his version he loves poetry, while in CBS's he's portrayed by by J.K. Simmons, who has an affinity for classical music. Meanwhile, as the virus spreads, we meet Larry Underwood in New York, a struggling singer-songwriter who only cares about fame. I'm gonna be famous, ma. Even better. I'm gonna be rich. In the miniseries, he teams up with a woman named Nadine Cross, the woman who will later become series antagonist Randall Flagg's bride. For some reason, this CBS version has him team up with a woman who only appears for about one or two episodes and has no impact on the story, but she's played by Heather Graham, so there's that. They team up to escape Manhattan. In the CBS version, they have this whole segment in the sewers, while in the miniseries, they go through one of the underground tunnels. Larry will end up marrying a woman named Lucy Swan in the miniseries, a woman who has taken on guardianship of a young boy named Joe. Lucy's character is cut from CBS and Nadine is the one who initially takes care of Joe. In the miniseries, Joe doesn't speak, but he does in the CBS version. Nadine is important because she becomes Randall Flagg's bride, eventually carrying his baby who he'll call his prince. And it's highly intimated that this prince will be the prince of hell. The CBS Nadine is pretty much all in with Randall from day one, having been chosen and seduced by him when she was a child in an orphanage, a backstory we don't get in the miniseries. When 
Nadine eventually meets Randall and they make love during this weird sexual assault type thing, their characters really start to differ. In the miniseries, Nadine goes crazy after finding out how evil Randall truly is, killing the baby inside her by jumping off the side of a building. In the CBS version, Nadine is put under some kind of spell, which makes her docile, a spell that is only broken when Larry forces her to see into her own reflection. She also grows this baby almost a full term in about two days and learns that Randall never really cared about her. He was just using her as a vessel for his child. This prompts her to also kill herself along with the baby. And let's not forget that pink scooter. Franny, played by Molly Ringwald in the miniseries, is straight up savage to Harold when he professes his love. You know, maybe I could be... Harold, we're always gonna be friends. <laughs> She'll go on to fall in love with Stu Redman, an event which causes Harold to switch allegiances to Randall. And we have to agree that Harold's jacket in the miniseries is totally cooler. The CBS version has this terrifying trucker scene where the trucker keeps women chained in the back of his rig, and we see how cowardly Harold is. This scene acts as an introduction of Franny meeting Stu and is not in the miniseries version. Back in New York, we're introduced to two very minor characters who make appearances in both versions. Ratman and Monster Shouter, portrayed by NBA great Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. In the CBS version, he's replaced with a white dude who says he's gonna masturbate in Yankee Stadium. While Ratman's role is significantly expanded through the character of Rat Woman, who is in charge of entertainment at Flag Stronghold, a huge casino in Vegas called Inferno. In the miniseries, his casino is called Union Plaza and is located in Old Vegas, not the main strip. All of these characters experience dreams from two people, Randall Flag and Mother Abigail. Mother Abigail in the miniseries is said to be 106, while in CBS she's 108, like that makes a difference. Hemingford Home, the location Abigail asked the survivors to meet her, is her home in Nebraska, while in the CBS version it's an actual old folks home also in Nebraska. Whereas Mother Abigail encapsulates everything good in the world, Randall Flagg is the opposite. His version in the miniseries is more over the top and cocky, while Alexander Skarsgård's for the most part is subdued, making the moments he does lash out even more frightening. In the miniseries, we never really see what happens to Randall Flagg after the nuclear explosion that supposedly kills him. We're to assume that he's dead, however the CBS version sees him still alive, trying to tempt Franny and eventually taking over a small remote indigenous tribe as their god. We see a new version of Mother Abigail as well, much younger, suggesting that the fight for good and evil will never end. And that's something the CBS version does that the miniseries doesn't, a full episode dedicated to the events after the nuclear bomb goes off in Vegas. Speaking of the nuclear bomb, how could we forget beloved Trash Can Man? Well, his character is a mess in both versions, both physically and his motivations. In CBS, they cut out this whole side story of him sabotaging the plane that was supposed to drop bombs on Mother Abigail's camp. His story is more streamlined in CBS and culminates in him bringing a nuke to the casino. In the miniseries, this weird hand of God comes out and explodes the nuke, while in CBS, it's a billowing cloud of lightning that does it. Our introduction to Lloyd Henry, the man who will become Randall's right-hand man, is also different. In the miniseries, he resorts to eating a rat in his jail cell to survive, while he straight up dines on his cellmate's leg in the CBS version. CBS's interpretation of Lloyd has him over the top and reckless, while in the miniseries, he's much more reserved and professional. Oh boy, next up is Tom Cullen, whose 1994 version, portrayed by the same guy who voices Patrick in Spongebob, probably wouldn't be allowed on TV nowadays. I always forget stuff like that. I hate being retarded. In the CBS version, he willingly agrees to become a spy, while in the miniseries, he has to be hypnotized. In the miniseries, he gets a job as a laborer at the airfield, while in CBS's, he's part of a janitorial crew responsible for taking away the bodies in the gladiator ring. As the survivors congregate in Boulder, Colorado to start a new life, there are a number of differences, like how we actually see the power plant in the miniseries, or how Harold gets a hold of the explosives that will eventually blow up Mother Abigail's home. In the miniseries, series he just kind of finds them with the help of Randall, but the CBS version does a better job here when Harold finds out that the ski patrol would use explosives to create controlled avalanches. In CBS, Harold and Nadine both press the button setting off the explosives together, while in the miniseries it's only Harold. The CBS version adds some more mystery when a Vegas survivor of Flag sends a warning to the town, something that doesn't happen in the miniseries. The town committee decides that they need to send out three spies to see if Randall is planning an attack. Here are the differences 
differences between these two versions. The notable one here being the judge changing from an older black man to an older white woman. We don't see how the judge dies in the CBS version, but we see the shootout he's involved in in the miniseries. In both versions, Dana attempts to kill Randall, but in the miniseries, her knife turns into a banana. In CBS, she manages to stab him in the neck, but it has no effect on him. Along with his power, he has the ability to levitate, which we don't see in the miniseries version, and he can also melt skulls. On his way to join Randall, Harold's motorcycle veers off course and he gets into a terrible accident. Nadine watches by and does nothing to help him. Hello up there! I'm still alive, but I'm very badly injured! I think my legs might be broken. He'll later go on to write a note on his body saying I was misled. Stu also has this shining like power where he senses that Harold has been killed, but that's cut from the CBS version and never really even explored in the miniseries. Harold also dies in a motorcycle accident in CBS. However, it's Nadine who causes it by making him speed up too fast. In this version, Harold leaves an entire notepad owning up to all the pain he's caused. In the miniseries, Mother Abigail and Randall never really talk. They do in CBS when she ventures off into the forest to listen to God. When she returns from her journey, it's Joe who finds her, whereas in the miniseries, she just kind of stumbles back one night. On her deathbed, Mother Abigail says she has a message from God that four people must go to Vegas to confront Flag with nothing but the clothes on their backs. The crew is the same in both versions, with the exception of Ralph, who is swapped with Ray. Glenn, who we haven't covered yet, is markedly older than his counterpart in the CBS version. His paintings become a plot point in CBS while they're not really covered in the the miniseries. While his death in both versions are done at the hands of Lloyd, in the miniseries he's killed in a cell after getting captured, and the CBS version he's put on a show trial where he prods Lloyd until he snaps. The whole show trial scene doesn't happen in the miniseries, and even the final execution scene is different. In the miniseries, Larry and Ralph are the final two survivors and are strung up on these weird devices awaiting their deaths. In the CBS version, they're tied to an empty pool, which also doubles as the gladiator pit and slowly drowned. After the nuke explodes, the miniseries basically ends. Tom saves Stu from the brink of death as the angel of Nick Andros helps him find out the right medication to heal him after a terrible fall left him stranded on the way to Vegas. The whole angel Nick thing never happens in the CBS version, however we do get an entire episode dedicated to what happens after the blast, which honestly was completely unnecessary. Stu and Franny risk their lives with their like three month old baby to travel back to Maine just because Franny wanted to see the ocean again. And Franny almost dies by falling down a well. If you ask me, they should have just ended it with Stu coming back to be reunited with his wife and baby. Also, the 90s version has these cool vignette montage sequences of all the people that died during the course of the show, which is just so 90s, and I'm a little bitter they didn't do it in this one. So that's it for some of the differences between both versions of The Stand. What did you think of the show, and what version do you think is superior? Leave your thoughts and comments in the description below. Thanks for watching, everyone. Please make sure to like and subscribe, and for more bad takes, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time remember daddy loves you very much